So picture this, you're playing chess on a digital board. Each square needs to keep track of what piece is on it. The piece could be a knight, a pawn, could be a king or a queen or a bishop, or it could also have no piece at all. Or imagine you're building Minesweeper, you know, that classic game from back in the day, where each cell needs to remember if it has a mine and how many mines are nearby. To represent situations like this, we have what are known as two-dimensional arrays or 2D arrays as uh, abbreviated form of it is. And you can find them in situations ranging from video game maps and video game boards, image processing scenarios where each pixel is a cell, seating charts for booking systems, scientific simulations, more traditional situations like spreadsheets and actual tables of data that need to be represented, and countless other real world applications. So in the next few minutes, we're going to learn all about how to create and work with 2D arrays, and learn some really nifty tricks that will make your experience working with them just a whole lot more fun and productive. So let's get started. Before I go on, let me first introduce myself. Hi everybody, my name is Krupa and I run Krupa.com, one of the largest and most popular online communities where designers and developers can learn to write code, build great UIs, and also just learn how to build great products. So great to have you here, welcome aboard. And now let's go ahead and talk about our topic of today, which is two-dimensional arrays. When we think of arrays in JavaScript, we think of a very linear data structure, something like this. Here I have an array called groceries, and I'm storing a list of items, milk, eggs, cereal, salami, juice, and the way I would access each of these items is by passing in an index position. So I have a single collection of data that I'm dealing with. Where 2D arrays, two-dimensional arrays really come in handy is when the data we're representing is no longer strictly linear. So for example, here I have data of some, of some sales information that I want to represent. You know, it's an example table. I have seven rows and I have six columns. I need to represent them in some form. And the way we're going to do this is by taking this content and turning it into an array of arrays. So a two-dimensional array is an array of arrays where I have this variable called sales data. And notice that I have one array and the contents of this array are the rows themselves that are going to be making up the data itself. And then the values in each row is the column information. You can see a one-to-one -one mapping between the actual columns and the actual rows represented as an array. And so when I think of two-dimensional arrays, this is the easiest way for you to create them. You just have to represent them from what it looks like in the representation that you're trying to deal with and have it appear in JavaScript in this form as a series of arrays. The way you read values from a multi-dimensional array or two-dimensional array is similar to how you might read maps or how you might read any X and Y position from a grid of data. What you have are index positions, the set of index positions for the columns and index positions for the rows. So in this case, the way I want to read the data, for example, let's say I want to get the value of 60 from this particular column. The way I would read that is by using sales data and passing in bracket one for the row that the content's going to be in, and then bracket four for, followed for the column the data is going to be in instead. And if you had to map this out, it's going to be the one points to the row itself. And the reason for it is that the way our array is structured is we're going row first as opposed to column first. So all of the children of our first array are going to be the rows themselves. And then the second value, the bracket four, points to the number 60 right here. And if we ran this code, when you just run, for example, sales data one, you'll get an array back. And that array will be all of the items in row, in this case, you know, row two or item at index position one. And then the bracket four will get the value from that array instead. So it's not a special kind of array. There is no data structure in JavaScript for two dimensional arrays. We're just making them up out of two arrays instead and using the similar syntax to get the actual value that we're going for. Now, in many situations though, we won't be creating arrays manually like we're doing here. There'll be a lot of situations where the data we want to read and the data we want to create the array from is going to be generated dynamically or come from an external data source. And for those cases, we can generate the array by just writing a few lines of code. Now, there are two ways of being able to do this. So one way, which I like to call the old school way, is where you use for loops, you know, a for loop for creating each row and then a for loop for creating each column inside each row. So here I have a function called 382D array, it takes three arguments, rows, columns, and the default value that the array will contain. 
the first for loop, I create the outer loop, which is the number of rows. Inside of it, then we create the inner loop where the columns are going to be there. And you can see right here, for each cell in our array, array i bracket i bracket j, we provide the value that we're passing in. The end result will be whatever the size of the array we specify with the value that's going to be filled in by default. Now, what this approach kind of hides is that with ES6 and more modern JavaScript approaches, there is another way of being able to do the exact same thing that we showed there earlier. So instead of it being like, let's say in this case, about, about you know, 15 lines of you know, functional code, here we just have one line of functional code. Instead, we have return array rows fill using the fill function and the map function to then create the number of, of kind of rows and columns. Whether you like the old school approach or the new school approach, it's entirely up to you on your preference for whether you like the readability and conciseness of this format or the readability and more verboseness of this particular format. So no judgment, no right or wrong answer right here. Now, one thing I do want to call out though, is when you create an array, you want to be able to at least be able to visualize it, see what it looks like and be able to do things. We always have our trusted friend console.log. So you have console.log, I'm printing sales data. You can now see that, you know, you see a collection of arrays, you can expand and you see it in traditional array index position output, where in this case, I see all the rows. If I were to expand that, I will see all of the other children that are in each row, which would be the column values themselves. Now, what we also have is a very handy variation of console, and that is console.table. So with the exact same data that we had earlier, when I print it out using console.table instead of console.log, I get a nicer visualization where I can see the data presented in tabular format, hence the, the console.table function, and I can see the index positions for the columns, index for the rows, all very nicely defined, so you can see the values more easily. Again, just like before, whether using the ES6 approach for writing arrays or the more traditional for loop based approach writing arrays, or if you're using console log or console table, there's no right or wrong answer here. Use whatever you feel most comfortable with. All right, so now before we wrap up, let's just quickly summarize what we just covered in the past few minutes, the important details of a two dimensional array. There are a few points here. One is the structure itself. You know, a two dimensional array is an array of arrays where each inner array typically represents a row. It has two indices. It has an indice for the, for the vertical positioning of things and the horizontal position of things to access the elements. And lastly, the layout, the arrangement of all of the, of our two-mesh array, it's a tabular format and you know, it's similar to a grid or a matrix or a table. So if you can know how to work with those data structures or at least what they look like, you can mimic those in the world of two-dimensional arrays as well. So with that, if you have any questions, the easiest place to get your questions answered is on the forums at formatcrypt.com where I and others will be very happy to help you out. You can also post in the comments below or post on Twitter or anywhere else that you can find me. And with that, I will see you all next time.